<laughs> so now this is time when we have with us Professor Sudan Su Sekhar Maiti, who is supposed to be the head of the Department of Statistics, Sikha Bhavana. And in addition to that, he is a person who actually did not requires any introduction, but being a teacher, he did not require any explanation or introduction. At the same time, he is a man who is soldering many administrative and additional responsibilities of the university. And that is why we are standing here and there and shouting many words here and there. Like NIRF ranking framework, he is the core person. Like ISA data provider, he is the key person. Admission, he is the key person. And in addition to that, several committees like annual report committees and many more. Many more. So I think he will be immensely benefited from his, this kind of deliberation. And as I said in the morning, this is just a stepping stone, not the closing stone. So today and tomorrow by two hours, sir may give you some insights, though this is not actually his hardcore subject area. Still, my request, he cannot deviate me. But okay, since you're asking me, I shall try. But as far as research is concerned, particularly social science and language literature, whomsoever, whenever you are just going to handle data, you need to have some analysis technique. So I think he is there, and under his leadership, there are five, four more faculty members are there. If you feel any problem, if you go to the Department of Statistics, I have more than confidence. He and his team will help you to make our research qualitative fashion and manner in terms of data analysis, statistical data uh, collection, and other many things, many things. So that our objective will be fulfilled, that our thesis will be qualitative, not only quantitative. So with this few sentence, let me hand over the session to our uh, respective professor, uh, Sudan Sudhaka Maiti sir, such this to gather the session. Thank you. Thank you, Nimaida, for your kind words. Uh, I think uh, mic is not needed, uh, audible everywhere. Yes. So, uh, he has rightly pointed out uh, so many activities we are involved. Uh, try my best, but how much I am successful, I don't know. The people will uh, just uh, uh, assess. But uh, one thing is that Nimaida has told the ethics that uh, uh, the confidentiality we have to maintain. The phone number you are given. So uh, there is the ethics that we have to maintain the confident confidentiality. And uh, uh, we will go to uh, so many ethics. Uh, those are related with the uh, research. In previous two sessions, probably you have got some idea about the philosophy and uh, different ethics that are used in research arena. Uh, Dr. Shah has rightly pointed out, this course is offered first time in our university. Probably this was uh, not, uh, 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 not uh, uh, a few years back in our research syllabus. But uh, nowadays, uh, UGC has given a mandate that uh, uh, every research uh, uh, course, there should be a mandatory course that research publication ethics. And uh, from that point of view, we have to start with that part. And this is the beginning. And it is also, uh, he has rightly pointed out, it is also my beginning with you, right? So now we are going to discuss about the ethics respect to science and research. So first uh, definition, uh, we will go to the, first we will try to get what is ethics, and then we will try to get what is research ethics. So just we go to the uh, Oxford Dic Dictionary. Ethics are normal principles that govern a person's behavior or the conducting of an activity. 
So when we are doing some activity, we have to maintain, maintain some ethics. When you are in your home, you have to maintain some ethics or some rules. When uh, uh, you are in medical practice, you have some ethics uh, that you have to maintain. Uh, when you are in research activity, you have to maintain some active uh, ethics or you have to behave like that way. Uh, what we have be what we behave in our home, uh, we could not behave in this uh, gathering that way. So everywhere there is some ethics or some uh, morals that we have to maintain, right? So there is medical, uh, medical ethics, there is some professional ethics, there is uh, similarly, we will get some ethics in, uh, in uh, research also. Uh, I think there is no need of uh, taking this note because I will hand over this PDF to uh, uh, Dr. Shaha and you can take it. Um, I have no copyright. Everything uh, is free. So now, uh, so this is the basic uh, definition uh, which uh, Oxford Dictionary has uh, given you that uh, uh, some moral principle that we have to maintain in our day-to-day -day life in any activity when we are going to perform uh, that governs a person's behavior. So how we will behave? Uh, when in an in a office, our behavior will be different. When we are in a home, our behavior will be different. When in our research laboratory, our behavior will be different. When we go to the say survey, our behavior will be different. So ethics will differ from different place to place, person to person, and uh, it is also the perception of uh, yours, how you will behave with others. Then we come to the research ethics. So when we are going to do research activity, whether it is social science, whether it is humanities, whether it is hardcore science, whether it is medical practice or anywhere. Anywhere, if we go to that, uh, uh, do the research activities, then there we have to maintain some behavior. We have to uh, also uh, apply some principles uh, that uh, this research ethics is specifically interested in the analysis of ethical issues that are raised when people are involved as participants in research. So when we are doing the research, party, uh, people's participation is there or animals' participation is there. Those are from zoology background, those are doing in botany uh, research, those uh, in some human research, anthropology or other areas, you have to always deal with the participants, some people, some animals. So when you do the research on them, or you collect the information from them, then you have to maintain some ethics or morals, where, how you will collect from that, just according to your wish, according to your whims, you will collect the information, you just need the information, uh, by who can prove I collect, collect that information? No, not permissible. So there may be some rule. There may some, uh, even if there is no such rule, but you have to uh, maintain some moral of collecting that information uh, for research purpose. So when there is uh, people or human being or animal, uh, any animal is involved, in your research activity, then you have to maintain some manner. Uh, and when you are doing the research, uh, the in intervention of people and animal must be there. They must be there. So uh, these are uh, the research ethics. Then I will go to the idea of science. What is science? I, 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 in general approach, everything is science. Uh, what we are doing, uh, we follow some methodology. 
we what we are doing uh, we follow some procedures so whether it is humanity whether it is social science whether it is engineering everywhere everything is science so science is the pursuit and application of knowledge and understanding of the natural and social world following a systematic methodology so you have to apply some systems uh, and some methodology should be there it may be predefined or you may define newly but uh, using that systematic methodology uh, we apply or we practice uh, to get the knowledge and understanding about the nature and the uh, society based on evidence so this is very much important point based on evidence we will not uh, uh, just uh, give, uh, we will take science without any evidence uh, from a vague idea uh, we just uh, tell that it is science no you have to give some evidence you have some data you have to, some some uh, data support what you are telling or what you are getting uh, about the science so it is a set of techniques it is a set of techniques methods and laws that are used or were used uh, to achieve knowledge so our basic aim for research is to uh, is to find out the eternal truth uh, to uh, find out the eternal truth uh, and that truth we will reach the truth from different ways uh, humanity people should reach that truth by their way the science people will reach to to, uh, to the eternal truth by their ways but we are going uh, we are trying to reach to the eternal truth and we are trying to give the knowledge and that knowledge will go to the society for the benefit of the society so uh, it is a set of techniques methods and laws or rules that are used uh, we will use that on or some tools are there that already has been used but we can reuse research is uh, uh, coming from that one search again and again search again and again so we are searching something we get something it it may not be the uh, unique uh, again we search for that one we may get something more right so uh, this uh, it is a set of techniques methods and laws that are used uh, or were used to achieve knowledge so although the science is a set of propositions it may be order and logically related uh, to form a coherent system coherent means we will um, try to logical and consistent so what we are achieving there must be logic it should not be illogical one and it should be consistent if we repeat again we will get the same result so uh, uh, that means we are just get, uh, doing the research and we get the result and after one day or two day we repeat that experiment we did not get that result so it is not research so it should be consistent one so uh, this uh, propositions order and logically related to form a coherent system these proportions must be accurate these proportions must be accurate if it is not if it is at the origin it is erroneous then uh, we will get the output research output also erroneous so this should be accurate not just ideas without foundation so uh, there is no foundation but we are applying that uh, i'll say methods or uh, some logics it will not be the uh, science so now we we so we get this idea that science is not only say mathematics physics geology botany it is not like that 
science is everywhere it is a systematic st study it has a methodological study so where there is methodological study there is science so uh, uh, humanities from that point of view is a science right now we will try to get what makes good research so first of all we will uh, uh, try to know what is uh, what we will call a good science uh, the first uh, idea is that the problem selection so when you are going to do some research first and foremost thing is how accurately you select your problem in if uh, the problem selection is right one then your research progress is say 50% or is complete so first you try to identify the problem very well you try to define the problem very well so problem selection is the first point of applying uh, science very accurately then smart objective that means uh, what we are going to do in my research uh, we are what we are going to do research and what is basically my objective what, where we are trying to reach that one so that objective that goal should be the clear and uh, concrete one so that should be smart objective so if your objective is right if you uh, you think that i will reach that point the path may be different uh, some people may go by different way another people go by different way but we will reach the same objective or some same goal so this smart objectives then we will come to the proper methodology so you have to apply the proper methodology to apply a good science in any research activity you have to apply the proper methodology sometimes uh, to get our fabricated result we may apply raw say wrong methodology to get the our intended result but that should not be there so to make a good research we we need the proper methodology uh, the methodology that we will apply for analysis of your collected data or collected research activity then your proper analysis so you have to go through the analysis of that information that you have got right so for doing that one um, i i i just uh, few days back in uh, science day program i told that one uh, those are uh, say geology or botany or physics or some other areas or in sports science and other area sometimes they come here uh, with a data from their experiment they get some data and they come to us and they dictate us the statistician that you make are unavoidable for that one right then i go to the data and i find that we could not apply anova for that data right so then the problem is there uh, when you are going to do the research you have to design the research such a way that your uh, from you hypothetically think that if we do that research then we will get uh, that output so uh, you have to you have to have some training uh, experiment and on doing that one you have to collect the information according to the design you have set or layout you have planned and if you do that one then that data can be analyzed so proper analysis until or unless you properly analyze the data uh, the uh, findings that you will get that may not be beneficial to the society so you just dictate that for publication of your paper you just ask to do some anova technique or say you just uh, calculate mean and plus minus standard deviation and you uh, give some uh, pictures there okay uh, for the time being you may publish that paper 
but you don't go through the proper analysis of your research data and that will not uh, be beneficial to the society itself. So to apply good science, we have to take care of that part. The first part is your problem selection. Then we have to fix up your objectives, what objectives uh, or what goal you are trying to achieve. Then for this purpose, what are the methodologies you have to apply? You identify that methodologies, and then you will go to the proper analysis of that uh, information that you have got. Uh, it, that information may be sometimes a quantitative type or sometimes it is qualitative type. But what information you have got that uh, you have to go through the proper analysis, then you can synthesize the exact finding uh, from your data, otherwise not. Then we have to go to the good ethics. Uh, we have to, uh, we will select the sub subject fairly. There will be no hidden agenda for uh, choosing your subject. So in fair way, you have to uh, select your subject of research. Then favorable risk benefit ratio. Okay, we are doing the research, we are taking so many risks, and uh, for that we have to get the benefit. We have to get the benefit means it is not my benefit, it is the benefit of the society, it is the benefit of the mankind. So that uh, uh, point of view we have to take into account, and this is our ethical point. And then we have to uh, think about independent review, right? So uh, I do the research, I collect the information, then I uh, analyze something, some other people can go through and they will independently just review that matter and they will say that whether this process is okay or not. So independent review should be there. There should be, there, um, uh, there is no such uh, say unethical ways for reviewing that activity. Then informed consent. So if you collect the information from the participants or people, then you have to inform them very well. For what purpose you are collecting that information? And uh, if you collect that information, whether any harm uh, could happen to that people, uh, uh, what uh, we have told a few minutes back, that suppose you are uh, taking uh, his or her say, uh, income and other data, but uh, you have to assure that, okay, this data should be uh, say, uh, confidential, and it will be not be misused. So you have to convince, convince that people, and you have to take the consent of that person that uh, I will collect the data, uh, this, this, this data from you, and uh, I need your consent, and I will use it only for research purpose. It will be not misused in any other purposes, right? So, uh, Then we will come to the principles of research ethics. Uh, this uh, first thing I told you that it is honesty. So what, when we are doing the research, first and foremost thing we have to keep in mind that uh, it is not only my benefit. Uh, it is the benefit to, for the society, whether the benefit goes to the mankind or not. So that point we have to keep in mind first. So uh, in India, generally we find that we uh, think for ourselves, but if you go to the Japan, their thinking is national. Whatever they are doing, they are doing for their nation. So if something is doing wrong, it is wrong to the so society means total nation. So always their thinking is different. So 
when we are doing the research activity, our thinking should be that way, that it is not my personal gain. It is the, uh, the benefit of this research will go to the society at the end. That's why we have to take into account this uh, part. The honesty is the first part that we have to follow in our research ethics. Then uh, sound judgments. So you have to judge the situation very well. And accordingly, you have to take the decision, right? Then we come to the integrity. That means uh, uh, teamwork. Most of the times, uh, what research we are doing, uh, most of the times it is the teamwork. Nowadays, you will find that in most selections, uh, they did not uh, give preference to single author. They always uh, expect that there should be multiple authors. Why should? Because therefrom they could uh, guess that uh, he or uh, she has a teamwork. She has a team activity. Uh, she has the uh, he or she has the integrity with the others for doing the research. So if it is a single paper, it is individualistic, and it is for your own only. But uh, you have to integrate all the people, and therefrom you have to collect uh, the, the uh, synthesis, uh, synthesize the information from all, and then you have to summarize that one. Then uh, we come to the carefulness. So when we are doing the research, always you have to take care about the data or records or experiments that we are going to. And then openness, we, we should be always uh, not confined or uh, just uh, uh, based on our wings. We will open for uh, discuss the problem with uh, my colleagues, with my other research fellows, with my teachers, uh, with some other people in that field. And uh, that openness should be there. Otherwise, uh, we could not uh, serve the society itself. Then respect for intellectual property. So, uh, always what we think, what I am doing, it is the best, others are not. No, that should not be there. We should respect others' work also. What they are doing, they are doing from their utmost care, and we have to respect them. them. So, uh, not only myself, others' intellectual activity we have to respect that uh, these activities also. Then we have to keep uh, in mind the confidentiality, the information which uh, the people give to you, uh, give you for your research purpose. That confidentiality you have to main, uh, maintain. Uh, suppose someone has given his or her some personal information, that uh, confidentiality you have to maintain, right? And then accountable publication. So uh, in detail, that discussion will be by some other uh, others also. That accountable publication. So uh, what generally sometimes we do, we will try to get uh, published some papers in some journals, and then we will just submit our PhD thesis, and we will try to get the PhD. But it will not uh, help the society at all. Uh, sometimes what we do, the same research activity, uh, we make the two or three papers and we send it two or three journals and get published. So uh, that should, be, should not be the practice. That should not be the practice because we, our, it should, we should be accountable about your publications also. So, uh, that uh, ethics we have to maintain, that if we do the research activity, it should be totality, and it should be communicated with one journal only. With one journal only. There should not be, uh, say, divided two or three or four papers, and we just uh, uh, increase the number of publications. Uh, that will not, uh, that benefit will not go to the uh, society. I, I, I told you that whatever we are doing, whatever we are doing, it is for the benefit of the society. Then 
uh, you will uh, find that uh, uh, accountable mentoring. So uh, obviously, the researchers have some uh, have their uh, say responsibility. Though they are mentors, they have also some uh, responsibility. They should be they should mentor and they will give the teaching to their researchers that we did not uh, say practice this ill ethics or we will not uh, say um, go to the plagiarism and other aspects and uh, they will uh, the mentors or supervisors they will take care of that path whether uh, someone uh, getting greedy for getting more and more publication, these uh, unethical activities is for uh, practicing or not. So this accountable mentoring, then respect for colleagues. Obviously, uh, I, 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 I mentioned that one at the part of respect to inter intellectual property, the same approach you have your research colleagues, uh, some teachers have their colleagues. So always, uh, we have to respect our colleagues because they are doing also the same thing or their work has the importance. Not only my work has the importance, uh, every colleague, what they are doing, what research activities they are uh, conducting, all have the importance. So we have to respect them. Then social accountability that I told you. Uh, you will find that for this research activity, a lot of money you have to spend. The nation itself, the world itself, your university itself, your department itself, spending a lot of money in this research activity. But where from this money comes? It is from the taxpayers. Taxpayers means only those are salaried person and business months, uh, people, they are only taxpayer. No, you are also taxpayer. You are the indirect taxpayer. How you will pay tax, can you say? So you are giving GST, thank you. So, uh, so a farmer, he or she is also, paying the tax. And from that money, uh, for research purpose, what is spent, uh, you find that society gives you spent a lot of money. So we have the obligation to the society, right? We have the obligation to the society. So that social accountability should be there. And then non-discrimination. So we, we will not discriminate. Uh, uh, those are the elite class, those are the middle class, those are the uh, say, uh, poor class and so and so forth. That discrimination should not be there. When we are doing the research, uh, sometimes you say, uh, I am doing the research in science, the, that area, that area, oh, you are in humanity. No, that should not be the discrimination because I told you that everyone Everyone are searching for the truth and the way is different. We are going to, we are trying to reach the same uh, goal or objective, but our path has, paths are different. So there should not be uh, discrimination. <clears throat> then basically three approaches of ethics in a research. Um, it is your uh, deont uh, ontology, which is basically the philosophical uh, research, uh, universal moral code we will apply. Uh, second approach is ethical skepticism. That means uh, we will try to get uh, the, get uh, whether uh, anything is wrong or right, so it is based on your individual conscience. So if your conscience does not permit, you will, uh, we, you did not do that one. And number three is utilitarianism, 
which is basically the cost benefit analysis. So we are incurring costs and we will try to get the benefit of that research. That benefit means always I told you it is the benefit to the society, right? Then who are the stakeholders in uh, research activity? It is the participants, where from we are collecting the information. Number two is the researcher. Uh, generally, uh, we have come for that. Uh, our aim is to do the research. We have to make the thesis. We have to submit that one. You, uh, we have to get a PhD award for getting a good job, right? So getting a good job. And there is uh, another stakeholder is your funding body. Because funding body, they are funding for research for the benefit of the society. They give different, uh, or they uh, take different projects. And uh, therefrom, they think that uh, by doing that area, the research and spending money, uh, we can add a whole, uh, do the benefit for the society. So these uh, three stakeholders uh, in a research, number one is the participants, number two is the researcher who is doing the research, and number three is the funding body. <coughs> then we come to the ethical issues concerning research participants. Uh, first is the Collecting information. Uh, the researcher needs to make the participants clear that the undertaken research is beneficial for society and only any relevant information would be collected. So uh, when we go to the go to collect the information, those are uh, those you are going for a survey in different places for your research. <laughs> Then uh, first you have to convince the participants who will give you the information. That uh, you have to go there, you have to ask them that uh, I am doing that research, that uh, doing my research, uh, this will be the benefit for the society and the information that you will provide, it will be used for research purpose only not for using uh, some other purposes, right? Uh, generally, sometimes uh, if you uh, go to the survey for getting the income of any people, the first and foremost uh, thing, uh, if I ask a salary person that what is your salary, he generally, he or she will not uh, reveal that one. Why so? There may be a skepticism that uh, whether he is a man from the income tax department, whether uh, there is, uh, whether if I tell that my salary is that one, then he or she may ask that uh, you, uh, you give uh, some gift to that society or that one. So always we will be suspicious about what purpose the information you are collecting. So you have to clarify that uh, participants that what purpose you are collecting that information and you have to convince him, him or her, that uh, uh, we are using for that purpose and uh, please uh, uh, supply that information. It will be beneficial for my research and ultimately this benefit goes to the society. Uh, so society will be uh, benefited. So the researcher needs to make the participants clear that the undertaken research is beneficial for society and only relevant information would be collected. Then seeking consent, constant, uh, consent. Uh, inform, uh, consent implies uh, the subjects are made adequately, adequately aware of the type of information researcher one, why the information is being sought, what purpose it will uh, be put to.
put to how they are expected to participate in the study and how it will directly or indirectly affect them. So, um, okay, you, you need uh, the constraint from the participant, but before giving the constraint, uh, he or she may be uh, aware that these are the benefits for this purpose we are collecting the information and ultimately the information that you uh, give, uh, it will be used for research purpose and uh, the result of the research will go to the benefit of the society in that direction or in that way. Then, uh, uh, then uh, this is an ethical issue that uh, we should not provide any incentive for getting that information, right? If we give some incentive, then uh, for getting information, the information may not be the correct one, right? Uh, uh, the information that uh, uh, supplied that uh, may be your fabricated one. So it is unethical to provide any sort of inducement or incentive to the respondents for their participation. Participants should not take part in the research because of privileges, but because of realizing the importance of the study. So if you can convince the participant that uh, your information is, uh, uh, is necessary for doing this uh, particular research. And as soon as he or she will be convinced, then he will give the information. But uh, we should not give any such incentive for supplying that information. Then uh, seeking sensitive information, right? Some information may seem sensitive and confidential to the participants, such as questions on sexual behavior, drug use, etc. Right? Uh, generally, if I ask someone that you you just drug, drug, obviously the answer will be no, right? The answer will be no. So this is a sensitive question, right? Uh, if uh, generally this was a question in censor, uh, if uh, in your house uh, they come and they ask uh, a female that, have you a illegal child? Generally the answer will be no. But, but these informations generally we need sometimes doing research, right? Then there should be some different paths, uh, uh, different paths. In statistics, we apply the randomized response technique, right? And by that way, we try to elicit this information by different way, not the straight uh, cut way to get that information. But uh, this sensitive information, uh, sometimes we have to collect, uh, and uh, even if we get that information, uh, obviously that should be confidential, right? So confidentiality we have to maintain. It is not ethical to ask such questions as long as the research requires those information. The researcher should ask sensitive questions, frankly, clearly with a with non-judgmental approach and give them sufficient time to decide whether they want to participate or not, right? Sometimes we have to give them the time that whether that information they are ready to supply or not, just I immediately ask and uh, immediately they will give the answer because they have to think about that one. What will be the pros and cons of supplying that information, right? So, uh, Then uh, possibility of causing harm to the respondent. Some information uh, may be harmful to the respondent or the participant. The following phenomenon should be avoided while gathering data from participants. Hazardous medical experiment, 
right? So uh, if you have to do some medical experiment for uh, uh, collecting information, there is some medical ethics of uh, doing that experiment. And you have to go to the medical board and you have to take the permission whether that experiment you can conduct on human body or not. Uh, if you conduct that on uh, up to how much ex extent, right? And uh, getting that information, um, uh, how much information you can use for your research. So there is some barriers. So, uh, and you will find that uh, those are in geology or those are uh, doing the research with any man, they have some rules and regulations also for uh, doing the research, everything they could not do. So then uh, causing discomfort, some question I am asking and you feel uneasy. So uh, we'll try to avoid that type of uh, questions or getting that type of information. To get that information, we have to go by indirect way, but directly uh, it is not uh, um, say, uh, ethical to ask the direct questions. Then uh, causing anxiety. Suppose I ask you the question and you get answers that if I give the information that uh, problem may arise, uh, then what will be the after effect? What will be the um, what we will do then, uh, then and uh, uh, he or she will be confused. So we will ask the question as simple as uh, possible because uh, the question that will create anxiety, that should not be there. Then causing harassment. Suppose uh, I, uh, uh, someone gives the information to you, then uh, he or she will get harassed by some people or from the society. Uh, that question should not be there. Inversion of privacy. If you will find that uh, uh, say some questions will sacrifice someone's privacy, then uh, uh, we should restrict that one. And demeaning procedure. So some procedures, um, we will apply, which is not ethical one to apply, right? Then we come to the, to maintaining confidentiality. So information should only be used in research purposes. And personal information of the participants or information that can harm individuals should remain confidential. Right? And in such cases, the anonymity of participants should be ensured by the researcher. So uh, we will not disclose the name who has given that uh, information generally. Uh, though you are uh, just uh, going to publish your papers, uh, you will find that the reviewer sent you the report, but you did not know the name of the reviewer, right? And uh, when we acknowledge, we tell that uh, we are thankful to the anonymous referee or referee for giving me information or um, uh, for improvement of the uh, paper. So that uh, reviewer uh, should be anonymous. Here, the participant should be anonymous. Right? Uh, his or her uh, name should not be disclosed and should not be mentioned anywhere that that people has given that information, confidential information. Then uh, researchers have to avoid bias. Bias means they should not hide or misinterpret any outcome to conclude a certain or predefined region. So sometimes what we will do, uh, we have some uh, idea that the result should be that one. And uh, uh, for doing that, uh, the information we get, we try to fabricate something and uh, we try to apply some different methodology 
to get that type of result, right? So that should not be there. Uh, research should be, I, I told you, really what information you got, what uh, data you have get, they, you will analyze that one. On the basis of that analysis, you will report that one. And then uh, what is the merits and demerits of that uh, uh, say, uh, experiment you will mention? And then uh, you will interpret your result. Uh, if exactly the result does not go with your uh, assumption, then why it is? What are the limitations of that data? You have to mention that one. But uh, don't uh, fabricate your data to get the desired result. Right? Then researchers have to use the data in fruitful researches. They should not overlook any valuable data. Sometimes uh, we overlook that one. We, we did not use uh, an important data. Um, so that should not be there. So we have to give equal importance for each data point or each information we have collected. Researchers should not use inappropriate methodology. I, I told you that uh, I apply a methodology and the result I get, this is not up to my expectation. So I will apply uh, another methodology. And by applying that inappropriate methodology, I get the result and it is up to my expectation. So I will put that one in my paper or in my research. That should not be. That should not be. So researchers should not use inappropriate methodology such as biased sampling. Uh, sometimes we will call that purposive sampling. For what purpose we are doing that one? Accordingly, we will try to get the data and therefrom we will uh, analyze and we interpret that one. But that will not ultimately go to the benefit of the society. Right? So biased sampling using invalid instruments, instrument so, and drawing wrong, wrong conclusions. Sometimes we, uh, we draw the conclusion in different way which favors our assumption or our expectation. That should not be there. Now, ethical issues for funding bodies. The funding body should not select the methodology, prohibit the publication or impose restriction on the research. So funding body, they are uh, funding for your research, okay. But they will direct that you will apply that method, I will, we will get that result, it should not be there. Uh, it should not be there. Research will go by its own way. And what are the result you get that you have to interpret? It is very unethical for the find, uh, funding body to misuse the data. Uh, generally, you will find that after doing your research, the data generally go to the funding agency if they require. Uh, okay, they can uh, take that one, but uh, they should not use uh, misuse that data for another purpose means it is not ethical using the data to prove or disprove certain agenda or using the data in wrong extent. I think I will uh, just stop here because some other people are there. Now, if there is any questions or comments from your side, you can ask. Sir, I didn't want to say that. During your talks, in, for in or does not give so much importance as multiple authors. Could you elaborate? Uh, generally, single author means uh, you are, uh, uh, it is not uh, exact, integrity means uh, mainly it is the team one. So, uh, if there is a teamwork, then there is an indication of all the results comes out. But if you are the single author, uh, you just uh, think you, in your single way, single channel, and you are giving the result. 
Sometimes in interview board, I have seen that the experts are not interested about that single channel. Uh, they try to uh, get whether, whether you have the team activity and you do the research taking uh, some other persons, other persons' view are incorporated uh, there, and then it, will be, it is expected that it will be the solid uh, finding in that particular it can do, but uh, uh, it may vary from person to person, but most of the interview boards that I have seen, they, their emphasis is uh, mainly on the uh, joint authorship uh, uh, works or research. Any other questions or comments? Okay, thank you. Sir, you said at the last that pathologic sampling may involve bias and lead to misinterpretation of results. But I have done the pathologic sampling in a pharma producer organization. Due to COVID pandemic, the mobility was not there. So we used the method of pathologic sampling. I got the correct result. So how can we tell that uh, there is bias by people or not? What is the degree of parameter we can use? Uh, okay, uh, uh, I, will, uh, I, I, I suggest you, uh, that time you have the restriction, now you go to um, the, uh, the random assembly, then you see whether uh, what result comes and whether it is at par your that result. If not, then you will realize that what is the drawbacks of the purpose assembly. Okay, sometimes, uh, we may restrict it some area because uh, suppose our research area is some particular uh, area. In that area, we have to do the um, uh, sampling. But uh, I will just purposefully choose that people, that people, that people, that should not be there. I have taken sampling in the state, district, block, and the institute. So then I have followed small sampling selecting the image. Okay, then, then you apply the uh, randomization, right? Uh, okay, I, I, uh, okay, that time it is a restriction. Then you, um, because you are the researcher, now you try to uh, select this blocks, this district randomly, and then try to collect the information. Then you see whether there is any difference. But partly you have applied the randomization. Snowballing uh, is there, but not total. Sometimes uh, it may possible. Uh, uh, suppose uh, if you are doing the research on tribals, then some districts you will get more and more tribals, but in some districts it may not be. At that point, you have to have to some extent purposive. But when you choose the particular district, there now you apply the randomization or snowballing, uh, then it is not purposive on it yet. Because, because, uh, because suppose you uh, choose a district where there is tri no tribals is there, then what is the uh, benefit of taking that uh, district? Uh, I am not taking about uh, that as a purposive sample. Right? Anything more? Either Kota Bango Kota. Thank you.